Okay, so I'm back. Computer restarted. Um, TFS angry at me again, of course. Connect to it. You know, I love to do this in videos because it takes forever and it doesn't let you do anything else. Let's go back to our Word document here. Is there anything we need to add? I think we've pretty much set everything up pretty good. Now, if you wanted to, you could add a little bit more information, like that this is an OLE DB co connection object, OLE DB command, OLE DB reader. But basically, that OLE namespace is going to prefix all of its different types of controls with that OLE prefix. It's just working on it, having a really long, hard time creating that connection. Lots of different obstacles between me and the OTC CIS team server that are having to be explored and routes found through. My goodness. Now, you know, as an instructor, I do a lot of the same things the same way because I'm showing people how to do stuff. So please let me know if you found a way that I can make this go faster because I would be forever in your debt. Do you think it's ever going to find it? I tell you, every time I restart, it's even worse than normal. We'll send this little snippet to the help desk and ask if they can help. See what they can do. Come on, baby. The other option is I might switch to visualstudio.com, the new facility that's being made available through Microsoft, which we'll probably be using pretty soon. It's pretty cool. You could take a look at it anytime if you want. Just go to visualstudio.com and say that you want to log in and use your OTC account, you should have access using that account. You can connect that account to our TFS server if you like and keep everything on the TFS server while using the new visualstudio.com interface. I'm feeling like I will just give up here. What do you think? Oh, I knew it. If I said I was going to give up, it would show up. I know how resources are. Okay, I can finally connect. And I just didn't want to get things being all wacky. All right. Now, where we were, where we left off, We've created our connection object in our code. When somebody clicks our button, we're trying to open that connection. We have things set up so that if there is any sort of error, it will display in our message down at the bottom of the screen. And we intercepted the message that we were missing some of the OLEDB objects. So we downloaded the update from Microsoft, restarted, and now we're going to try our application again. Now, this time, I still get an error, but I get a different error. Could not find the file memberdb.accdb. And note the path that it's looking for this database in, in our bin debug folder. So let's add our database to that folder. Go to Solution Explorer and look at a folder view. Expand our bin, debug, and we need to find that access database 
and I saved mine in my documents folder. And for this first I thought I did. There it is. Now for this first application, we're just going to copy our database into our bin debug folder. And then as we get more advanced, we'll find that there's lots of other ways that we can take care of this. Now this member DB only being in this bin debug folder is only available to this application. It's not shared with others. Now let's try running again. And I'm going to go back to my regular Solution Explorer. It is whacking out on me and just run it. Okay, so now I should be able to click load data. And awesome. No message or anything. So we didn't get any errors. So let's go back to our code and make it do even more. Now our open was obviously successful because we didn't get any messages. Oop, hang on. Remember I had to restart my computer here. Let me go back to our textbook site. Once we've got our connection open, we're ready to issue an SQL command. Let me expand this a little bit more. So if you remember, we set up this string called SQL to hold our SQL command. So our SQL statement is actually just going to be embedded within this string. So if we have a typo or something in here, um, Visual Studio is not going to tell us about that. I want to select everything from my member table and I want to order by last name and I want that to be an ascending sort. I would also like to add the first name in an ascending sort also. Now I want to close my SQL statement with a semicolon and I want to close my C sharp statement with a semicolon. So now I have created an SQL command that is in this string. Now I'm going to create a new OLE DB command object and if you remember we had named that DB command And then with our DB command, we're going to update that instance and say, I have some command text for you. I have a command and it's in this SQL string. Now I'm going to update my DB command object again and tell it, oh, your connection is my DB connection object. So this is how you connect to the database and the SQL string is what you execute when you connect to the database. So let's look at our flowchart again. Is there anything that we want to update there? To me it looks like my DB command is using that SQL string and my DB connection is using my connection string. So we have some requirements there and then my command also needs 
the DB connection. Then we can see that from the flow chart here with that arrow indicating that relationship that our command is dependent upon a connection. Now we've built our command object, but we haven't run it yet. We haven't said, I want you to run this um, select statement. There's a lot in your chapter that's really great stuff. Now, when we're ready to read our data, let's go ahead and put that in. We're going to be using our DB reader. We're also going to be using our member object. Remember, a member will say, we don't really need to create our new member object right now. We will do that in our loop as we read through all of the collection of data that was returned by the select statement. We do need to set up our DB reader. And our DB reader is going to be built by actually running our database command. So we're going to say execute that command and return the results to this reader. That's what the execute reader method does. Now remember when we were working with sequential files, we had to go into a while loop to continue reading data as it was available until there was no more data. So that's what we're going to be doing in our database loop also. While our reader has data to read, we want to get each record. So we're going to say, hey, our member object that we created Let's create a new one, and our new member is going to be created based on this database reader information. Now, in our database reader, we would like to access the first name column, and we would like to convert that column object to a string. And we would like to access the last name, go away thing, column. And notice how these column names are being placed within a string within square brackets. And the database reader is going to understand that and use it to query through the data to return just those column new values to our program. Now that's going to end that new member statement. Now notice that our member instance that we create is only going to have the first name and the last name because that's all that we've pulled out of our reader object. Now once we've got that pulled out, we're going to add it to our list box. And what we want to add is that member that we just created that just has that first name and last name. And remember, that's okay, because we only um, returned the first name and the last name from the two string for our member object. So any other data would not be displayed anyhow. So let's do some commenting here, and then we'll try running this. First, in our try, we're going to set up the connection to the database. And then in our reader, we're going to finally run the SQL command and return result cell in our reader. Now again, in our reader, we're going to read through those results. And you should see that as we run our program. Let's try it. When we're working with a database, it is just like a text file or a sequential file. We do need to close that database after we're done using it. So at the end of our while loop, 
we need to close our reader. And then, oops, let's see, why did it not go to the right place? Then we need to close our connection. Where are all my things? There we go. Let's go ahead and update our label message. And we should be ready to go. Now notice that when we're working with the database, we have to establish our connection by opening it, set up our command, run our command, and then close all of our different resources that might require any sort of close. And then we're ready to try our application. Click my load data button to execute our database commands, and there is our database data. So, working great. We are going out and we're accessing the little access database, bringing information in and displaying it in our form. Now, in this application, we are accessing a data source, and we do have a user experience, so consider how you might need to change things for a three-layer application. But at this point, let's just focus on getting to our database and getting information from the database into our program and course database in the best way that we can save data, pretty much. So thank you.